This is Things I Found Online, starring Louise Palanker, Jamie Alcroft, Leslie Sackheim, and our very special guest, psychic medium, Artie Hoffman. Who saw this coming? Artie did. Louise? Yes, very clever, Jamie. I enjoyed it. Um, <laughs> Thank you. I our read guest everything is that, psychic. Oh, that was on the page. You read it. You're, yes, and, I Really, I and he didn't even cards. have to stand next to his desk while he read. It was very impressive. <laughs> yeah. um, we used to call that reading aloud. Yeah, in, in school, you know, can, you, she can read, but can she read aloud? Aloud. Now it's announcing. Oof. And uh, and I always thought when I saw aloud that it meant you had to speak really loudly. Like I just saw the loud part. What What did you What did you say? What did you say? <laughs> <laughs> huh? 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 So yes, our guest is psychic and medium Artie Hoffman, and Artie is coming yeah. to us from. Where are you? What's I'm your location? From Central Jersey. Central Jersey. But are you on a couch? What is exactly your location there? Central oh, Central in my House? Apartment. Yes. <laughs> he won't, nice. he won't I'm, say I'm where on he's my sitting. Couch. I'm chilling out on my couch in New Jersey. Looking good. Looking good. All right. So cool. our show is called Things I Found Online, Artie. So we'll, we start by initiating our guests by Googling them. Are you willing and able to be Googled? Sure. All right. It may tickle. Okay. Um, here ready. we go. We're going to Google Artie. There'll be a slight tingling sensation. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Artie Hoffman. Now, Artie, are you aware that you have a 4.6 favorability rating on Google? Woo! No, I don't. Yeah. I don't know anything about myself. <laughs> you should Believe try. It it's fun. You should so, watch our show. I'm going to read you some reviews. These are people is, that have... Wait, is 4.6 good? I don't know. What's the highest? The highest is 5. Oh, okay. So I guess that's pretty you good. You will be going to Stanford. Mm -hmm. These are good scores. So G. Butler <laughs> wrote, uh, Artie Hoffman is the real deal. His readings have amazed me. The things he said in my reading was something no one could know, not even my friends knew. His kind demeanor makes you feel at ease. I would never go to anyone else. And Karen Rodriguez wrote, Artie Hoffman truly has a gift. I had struggled for years after my mom's death. I blamed myself when she died. Artie told me things that no one else knew. Through him, I know that my mom is okay and that she doesn't blame me. She loves me and wants me to stop hurting myself. Artie is a genuine, loving, and caring man who has given an amazing gift. He gives people hope and a way to let go of guilt. Thank you, Artie, for all you do. Jamie, would you like to read uh, this biographical information about Artie Hoffman? Uh, right, right here. here. The, well, the one that begins with Artie Hoffman. Artie Hoffman. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that must be you, Artie. Mm -hmm. Artie Hoffman. I is feel a, like I'm. Yeah. I feel like I'm listening to my own eulogy. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> it's just another episode of This Is Your Life. He was a very yeah. kind man. Artie. He was a, funny guy. He was a he world would help anybody out. Yes. He would take the shirt off his back. May I have a Kleenex? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can make it through this now, Artie. <laughs> he Give was him a tissue. Somebody get him a tissue. He was a world-renowned psychic and medium <laughs> who has been counseling and entertaining people for the last 30 years. He has read for over 29,000 people in his career. He's also the author of the book Angels and Answers. He has a way of delivering messages with such simplicity and at the same time being able to make people laugh. That's a really good quality. Mm -hmm. He inspires people to see things from a healthy and spiritual perspective in ways that just about anyone can understand. Anyone who happens to meet Hardy will appreciate not only his wisdom, but his sincerity, which is why he's known as the hottest psychic with the warmest heart. If you wish to get a private reading or have a psychic party, you can reach Artie by going to his website, artiehoffman.com, or email him at artiehoffman at gmail.com. All right, and we can repeat all of that information at the end of the show, so don't feel like you have to hit the pause button and run and get a pencil. That's right. Because, uh, you know, Artie's going to be with us for the hour. So, Artie, um, can you tell us about your process and how you receive your messages? Uh, wait, when you say how I receive my messages, you're, are you talking about how I receive my messages now spiritually or or how I got started? What were you asking? Well, I receive my messages through Gmail, but I assume that you have like an uh, open line of communication to something uh, that, that we humans here on earth are not aware of, you know, how, how exactly that. Oh, the vessel, I see. The vessel, okay, saying. yeah, I don't, yeah. teach yeah. me the language of your trade. Yes, the vessel. Yeah, no, no, so, no, you said it right. It was just, it could have gone, that's okay. But any case, <laughs> as far as far as how I get my messages, um, actually, believe it or not, that's kind of like a tough question because it's like I'm off all the time. 
meaning I'm not connected. I'm only on when I want to be on. So when I um, want to channel, when I want to get answers, in other words, um, if I want to start reading somebody, I'll hold their hand. I usually will hold their hand and then instantly I get messages into my thoughts. Um, I'll get, I'll get songs in my head, whatever the song is about. Uh, that's what's going on with the person. I'll mm-hmm. get references um, from things that happened to me or happened to my friends from the yesteryears. It will just pop in my head. So those references will have to do with this person. Um, a lot of times I'll just get pictures. Um, I'll get videos in my head. Um, I hear, I literally hear voices in my head. Um, all spiritual, not schizo. <laughs> and you have to figure out how to interpret it. Uh, yeah, no, but it's pretty simplistic. Um, sometimes it's black and white and other times it's metaphorically. So a mm-hmm. lot of times, um, I know, you know, it's frustrating to me because a lot of times, like, I'll say things to you and I don't know why I'm saying what I'm saying, but you'll understand it. Or sometimes I do know come black and white. I know exactly what I'm talking about because it's just how strong the messages are pulling through. Mm -hmm. So whether it be coming from your loved ones or from your guardian angels or my spirit guides, um, I don't care where it comes from. The bottom line is it's just the royal truth. So who's ever willing in the spiritual world to share information with me, whether it be audio or video or songs or, you know, um, it just pulls through. So right now, if you could picture right now what your bedroom looks like, mm-hmm. that's how I say. Mm-hmm. I see. If you could, if you could hear the sound, say, of one of your best friends or one of your parents, if you could hear the sound of their voice in your head, you could recall the sound of their voice. That's how I hear. Mm-hmm. When was the the first time you realized this was happening? And if you're hearing voices in your head, you must have thought you were going nuts at first. Or, or now, is it... I was tw- Go ahead. You know what? I went, believe it or not, it's quite interesting because, you know, I was very frustrated in my life when I was 27 years old. I had everything going for me, but yet inside I wasn't satisfied. And, um, you know, I don't know, maybe you might have thought I was, I could have been selfish at the time because, you know, I was married. I just had a child. We have a nice house, um, you know, vacation. I know, you know, everything was just going my way, but inside I just was not fulfilled. And so I'm sitting at my home office uh, in my basement at the time. It was a finished basement. I'm looking up to the ceiling and I said, God, I said, I need answers. I need clear answers. And when you give them to me, please don't scare the hell out of me. <laughs> <laughs> and so I go upstairs to my kitchen because mind you, I'm coming from my basement. I go upstairs to my kitchen and, and I see a bunch of junk mail there. And usually when I see my junk mail, I instantly just usually throw it away. But this time I was uh, shifting through all my junk mail. And I, and I saw this one card, this postcard. It was from the Edgar Casey Foundation. And it said, how would you like to develop your psychic ability intuitiveness? Go to the Edgar Casey Foundation in Virginia Beach for this one weekend seminar. And so I'm looking at it. And I said to my wife, who was my wife at the time, I said, you want to go to this? I said, this looks really interesting. Now, I wasn't looking at this like it was the answer to my prayers. Mm-hmm. I did it just for the hell of it, just to see if I could do it. And she says, I don't care about that. She goes, you can go if you want. I don't want to go. So I went and um, I drove out there and um, I met some really cool people. There's about 50 of us from all different parts of the world. And they taught you how to open up your heart and mind to be 100% unconditional. So when they broke us up into groups, they said, whoever you're sitting with, do not judge the thoughts, do not judge the images, but whatever you get, just share it with the person. If you don't understand it, the other person will. And so I was doing this and doing this and doing this with different people throughout the weekend. And I, I was blown away by the messages that I was getting for these people. And people were telling me how accurate I was. I was just, I felt like I just discovered plutonium. I just, I couldn't believe it <laughs> that, that something like this even exists in the world. So I go home and I bought myself a deck of spiritual cards. And so for the next few years, I was reading for friends and family just for the fun of it. And, um, you know, again, people were telling me how accurate I was. And I go, like every single time I tell them stuff, I go, really, really, really? You know, I'm telling them stuff, but I'm not saying it with conviction, like, oh, this is definitely going to happen. I'm just saying, well, this is my gut feelings. This is what I'm getting. And then um, lo and behold, people would constantly be calling me or email, email, emailing me, telling me like, yeah, you know, you were right about this and that happened, this happened, that happened. 
so this one incident, when I first started doing this, you know, one of my friends, you know, invited my wife and I over to their place. And so his wife was really into this stuff. And she says, Artie, can you tell me some things about me? So I, I looked at her picture because when I first started, I could only do it by looking at a picture. So I was looking at her picture while they were in the other room and I'm sitting like in front of a dim light and I'm looking at a picture. And I said to her, I said, be careful of your things because while you're at work, someone's going to try to steal something from you. Well, what ended up happening now, she, she takes a train into New York city from, again, from New Jersey, mind you. So she, um, she calls me up two days later and she goes, Art, she goes, you're not going to believe this, but you know, like all day, like after you said that, it's like my pocketbook is by my desk and I'm looking at it all day long, making sure nobody's touching my stuff. And when she got home on the second evening, you know, after I did that reading for her, when she was coming home, she got off the train and she's going to her car. Somebody broke into her car and tried to jimmy the uh, steering wheel and try to hotline her car to steal it because they pulled the steering wheel column out and they couldn't get it um, to hotwire it. And so that like shot a shot a adrenaline right through my spine right. when I heard that one. Wow, so that was my very first wow, wow experience when I got home. And so again, I was just for the fun of it. So now I, can't, I put myself in a, a financial mess, a financial position where I needed a lot of extra money other than the amount of money that I was making. And, um, and I put myself in a financial hole because of the stock market. And wouldn't you know it, the moment I sold my stocks, I mean, when I say the moment, I'm talking the moment I sold both of my stocks, both of them started taking off. Um, and within one year's time, one of them went up 100% and the other one went up 650%. And when I tell you, I was, and I was borrowing money that I didn't have from other people to invest in these stocks. So I'm sitting on my couch and I'm thinking to myself, what can I do to earn extra money? And I'm thinking, you know what? I know how to do readings. I said, I'll throw an ad in the paper. And I didn't want people to think I was taking advantage of them. So I threw an ad in the paper and it said, if I don't pull through for you, no charge. So the phone calls were coming and 90% of the people paid me. And it just took off. I mean, a whole endeavor and career took off. And now you're talking 30 years later, literally over 29,000 people, people later. And just word took off. And now I do what's known as arty parties. You know, I read, mm -hmm. I go to people's homes and mm -hmm. I read, read for their friends and family. Um, I've been on the radio. I've been on TV. Uh, the funny thing is I always wanted to become a counselor or a therapist going through uh, junior high and high school, you know, but I sucked at school. I wasn't the best student. I was funny. I was well liked, but I, I sucked as a student and um, I didn't have the financial means to go through all this schooling to become a therapist. And the funny thing is, is now I have therapists who come to see me for answers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. So I'm sure cool. there's a ton sure. of therapy wrapped up in what you do. Leslie, do you have any questions for Artie? Okay. Uh, so I have never been to a psychic. I've always wanted to be, but I have never um, seen one because I've been really scared that I'm going to get some kind of bad news. And then people say, oh, they're not going to, you know, give you bad news. Um, so do you? I mean, do you try to keep it positive? Because that's my big fear. I don't want to hear anything bad. Tell her she's pretty, Artie. Mm. Go ahead. I'm very... <laughs> <laughs> you're wonderful. You're beautiful. When you want to go out? <laughs> um, now, as far as... Now, I'm known as uh, for being very inspirational with my messages. Um, I just said on my Facebook live show yesterday, um, I said, anybody who tells you that there, somebody put a curse on you, um, just walk out because nobody put a curse on you. People say this, um, I'll call them shysters. Uh, they try to manipulate the public. Obviously you're there because you have love problems or you're missing your loved ones or something bad. you know, usually don't go when you're in a happy go lucky mood. You know, it's usually when there's something wrong. So these, um, um, People who pretend to be psychic mm -hmm. will tell you, oh, my God, there's a curse on you. There's a cloud over your head. And, you know, for three thousand to eighty thousand dollars, I can remove the curse wow. and give me a piece of jewelry and I'll bring it to the Vatican and I'll bless it. Oh, that's so stuff. manipulative. Yeah, very manipulative. And so, you know, so and, and people ask me, you know, uh, you know, already do you ever tell people when they're going to die? And the answer is no. The only time I'll mention if someone's going to pass, if they're already on their deathbed, 
and you're taking care of them, Mm -hmm. you know, then there, you know, you want to set things up, you you know, you're preparing for a situation that is inevitable. So that's a little different, but basically, you know, uh, the norm, you know, the normal person who, even if they're sick or whatever, you know, am I going to die or when am I going to die? I never mention it. Even if they're younger, I would never mention it because what happens is that because, uh, you know, putting faith in me or trust in me or anybody else who's a psychic or a medium, um, you could create that to become a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so even you might not think about it consciously, but on the subconscious level, there's a seed planted. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's not, I I would say it's not of integrity. I'm a very, well, I like to consider myself of a very integrity uh, style type of person when it comes to readings. Mm -hmm. So if I see bad news with, so I would never tell people when they're going to die. And people have asked me, I'll tell people, it's like, you know, you're going to live a long life. I do see longevity in your life. So there are reasons why I do say that, because if somebody is obsessed about death or dying, even though it wasn't brought up in conversation, I'll just mention it to them just so they could relax. Right. You know, they want to know, will I be around to see my kids grow? Mm -hmm. Will I be around as a grandmother? Will I be around for this? You know, without them even saying that subconsciously, I'm getting there's a reason why I need to tell them they're going to live a long time. Mm -hmm. And I don't and that's not in all my readings. But if I do see bad news in someone's life. I will tell you how to overcome it. But, you know, if somebody's asking me about their relationship, you know, and they want to know, you know, how do you see my relationship? You know, I'm going to tell you my truth. Um, But if I see somebody who's being cheated on, but they never asked me about their relationship, I'm not going to say, oh, by the way, do you realize your spouse is cheating on you? I would not do that because they didn't bring it up. And I don't want to be the bearer of bad news in that way. But if somebody is specifically asking me a question about a job or a love or whatever, then, you know, I'm going to tell you the truth. It's not all bad. A lot of times it is great news, but then other times it does suck. But then I'll tell you how to overcome it. So, Artie, can you, ch- can you explain the difference right. between a psychic and a medium and how, um, how you're able to function as, as both? Yeah, a psychic is somebody who could tell somebody their past, present, and future, talk about their love life, their business life. They could help you make healthy choices with Mm -hmm. your relationship, with your job. Um, I'm very good at, you know, predicting people's future love, you know, so, you know, that's my forte. And is that your your spiritual guides are advising you as to that? Yes, yes, it is. It's my spiritual guides, absolutely, and my angels. Um, And a medium is somebody who just, you know, who could communicate to the dead, who could communicate to people who passed away. Um, It's known as a medium because we raise our vibrations higher and the spiritual world brings their vibrations lower. And so you meet in the middle. So Mm -hmm. it's known as a medium. Now, do you know anything about the identity of your spiritual guides when you're giving psychic advice? Uh, be more specific of what so you're asking. If you have sp- if you have spiritual guides who help yeah. you see someone's future or see what's going on in someone's life to help help advise them through a love situation or what have you, who are those guides? Are they people that you knew in life, or are they just uh, spirits who have chosen you to speak through you? Um, literally, it's everything. It's a mishmash. It's a mishmash. Okay. And you can't always tell where the where the message is coming from. Um, I can't, and and uh, and the reality is, um, it doesn't make a difference right. to me. The bottom line is, I get the messages. There are times where, like, just say I'm tired or I'm emotionally not in the best of place. Now, my parents passed away, and my mother I was very close to. Mm -hmm. So what I'll do is, like, if I'm – and I've done this. I went to a convention, and I knew it was going to be a long day, so I brought my mother's picture. So even though my mother never met you personally, I was literally – when people were coming to see me, and I read for about 20 people that day too, Mm -hmm. you know, a bunch of 10-minute reads, 15-minute reads – I would be looking at my mother's picture and I would say, mom, what's going on with this person? And then I would have a conversation with my mother and my, and my thoughts. And she would start telling me all about this person. I look at the lady and say, you know, your mom is telling me this and she's telling me that. And she's saying that, you know, you're, you're really caught up between this guy and the other guy and that you should be moving out of your relationship. And you, you, you know, that you've been in this relationship too long and da, 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 da. 
And she goes, you know, your mother's right. <laughs> you, know? you know, when my after my father died, uh, very soon after my father died, my sister had a vivid dream where she dreamed that my father came to her and said, I know who killed Kennedy. And then she woke up. So do, do you think that when people pass over, they, they have all the information in all of the world? All of it. There are no hidden uh, there are no hidden um, um, factors of the world. There's no, uh, there's no agenda. There's no secrets. It's pure unconditional. Everything is glass on the other side. Everything is pure unconditional love. The ego does not live on the other side. Mm -hmm. It's just pure unconditional love. Um, you have the soul and the ego over here. I explain that within my book, Angels and Answers. Mm -hmm. And um, within the book, it explains all about life. Well, there's so much about life. I'll say a lot about life in a very simplistic spiritual manner where it totally makes sense. And um, there really is not a physical place called hell. There is a place called heaven, but hell does not physically exist. Hell is an emotional experience. So when you are totally stressed out, you're totally fearful about something, uh, you have anxiety up the gazoles, um, you're feeling extremely guilty, very lonely, very jealous, all, the, all those negative, negative, negative feelings. That's you living in a living hell. Mm -hmm. And you're allowed to step out of it anytime you want. Mm -hmm. But when you do something wrong, I'll just say something wrong, but it's just an experience in reality. But when you do something wrong, according to society, God doesn't punish you. But there is this thing called cause and effect. Right. So the laws of physics, the, the laws of physics apply to all energy, not just physical. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. It's not just physical. It's also spiritual. It's not that God's punishing anybody. It's just what's known as karma, which is just cause and effect. Mm -hmm. So what? say if you're really angry and you put your fist through a window, you know, and you have bloody hand and bloody arms, and you're, you're all cut up and bleeding to death. It's not that God punished you. It's just you're a jackass and that's the cause of natural cause and effect. Yeah, or you need foam walls. Um, I have a, uh, another question for you. Um, when I was uh, about 19 years old, my grandmother passed away, and I had been a smoker at that time, and I remember my grandmother always telling me to quit smoking and how bad it was for me. And She so, loves you unconditionally, by the way. She, she really, she just said, "Tell, please tell her I support her every step of the way, and I always have. And she goes, just please tell her I have said everything for her own behalf, not because of fear. I just always knew that she was better than what she gave herself credit for. And, and I just try to tell her things that could help her along in her life. I try, please tell her I didn't try to tell her anything that would hurt her or try to hold her back. I just try to tell her things for her own good. But just please tell her how much I miss her and I love her with all my heart. Are you able to send her a message back? Yeah, send her well, a message back. Well, when you back. talk out loud, they hear you. Yeah. Okay, because I think about her every day, and she was so meant so much to me. But what what I was going to say was that right after she had passed away, um, I had been smoking a cigarette, and I stuck the cigarette in one of those big, thick glass um, ashtrays, and the ashtray just completely broke in half. And so I didn't know if that at the time was a message from her, if that had anything to do with her. Or... It had to do with your energy, believe it or not. Yeah. It didn't yeah. have to do with her. It had to do with your energy. Her you know, deal. because when you hear your grandmother speak about it and the energy that you gave that cigarette, or when you have, you have a cigarette, when you put it out, it's like that was a cause and effect. Wow. It's now, when people see animals or butterflies or 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 um, or or praying mantis or whatever they see, it's not that your loved one has come back as that. It's that your loved one is sending that to say, you know, hi, I'm I'm here and I'm thinking of you and you can think mm -hmm. of me. What? I'm right. At, I'm yeah. At, it's like a, it's like their little hallmark card. It's their way of saying okay. hello or they turn on they turn toys on by itself or they turn the TV on or off by itself or the lights will go on and off by itself. Yeah. That happens Let's to my friend, uh, Vicki. She, um, it turns on her, um, her electric, her father turns on her electric toothbrush all the time when she's stressed <laughs> out. Yeah. Was, it's, was it's he a, a dentist? No, no. She just knows that it's him and it happens so often that she knows it's him. So it's a poltergeist. 
thing. Uh, no, no, I don't know. I think it's just or what, a what it's gate. just like what Artie said. It's a card that says, "I'm thinking of you, and and you should think of me because no. I'm he- I'm here. I'm close by." Artie, have you ever been? Well, you, oh, go ahead. You have to understand something. Our loved ones who have crossed over, and let's just talk about her grandmother. She's really, in reality, she's not dead. Nobody ever dies. What what dies is the body. The body dies. But we never die because we are not of our body. Our soul is expressing itself, utilizing your body to express itself while it's here on earth. But the moment the body retires, once the body dies, then the soul lifts up out of the body into heaven or into a different light form, into a different energy form. And they continue to live, but they're just in a different plateau. But they're fully aware and understanding everything of what's going on in our life. Do you believe in reincarnation? 100% yes. So how long do we spend in between lives? Hmm. Um, it's, it's up to each individual. Yeah. Everybody has their own karmic time. There's not a set pattern like, okay, uh, you're here for 10 days. Because... Time and space does not exist on the other side. Everything That's what is I always to- thought, Artie. I always thought those are constructs of the physical form that oh, yeah. that that things that that mystify us, like when is the end of forever, or in in regards to time or space, like we get we can stay up at night, just kind of freaking out about well, what happens after space ends? Then what? It, but I don't think those I I don't think those are constructs that exist on the other side, and it becomes just no. like abundantly simple once you cross over. Is that is that kind of what when you yeah kind when of, you say that I'm thinking of the song What's Forever For Oh I love that song <laughs> you know yeah so it's really funny so my friend and I you know we were um, you know we were like being snuggly and we're good friends and we were you know we're watching TV and we're and we're during a commercial break and we're just snuggling up against one another and uh, she we were talking about relationships and she goes you know. A lot of people, when they're in love and in the moment, and they'll look at you with beautiful, you know, loving eyes, and they'll say, I love you forever and ever, for now. <laughs> <laughs> um, can I ask you what the difference is between an intuitive and a um, psychic? Really, it's not much difference at all. It's, it's just a different word for it. Um, Somebody who's intuitive, it's just a psychic will will do it more in demand, um, you know, as far as being able to reach for more answers on a deeper level or an intuitive person is something is they follow their gut. I have a gut feeling about this. I have a gut feeling about that. Um, That's like an intuitive, intuitive person is like, you know, I'm getting a bad feeling, you know, when you're psychic. You can't, if you walk up to an intuitive person, most of them, if you ask them a question and say, do you think that I'll keep this job or do you think that I should stay in the relationship or can you tell me what my future holds? An intuitive will tell you usually feelings of what's going on in the moment and a psychic will be able or a good psychic will be able to tell you what what has happened or what's going on in the future or, you know, on a deeper level, but intuitive person will tell you what they feel in the moment. Artie, um, are you uh, willing to answer a question from Mary DeFore? She wrote in and she has a question about her daughter. Can you, can you feel her energy if I speak about her and tell you her name? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So her name is Mary. Give it up, sister. De Fiore. De Fiore. I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but she wrote, hi, Louise. Uh, my mo- let's see, Louise was my mother's name, and my cousins call her Louise. So I'm called Wheezy, so that's pretty accurate. Wheezy. Pretty similar, anyway. So my daughter is 35, and she has MS. She has been having headaches, and then yesterday her brain was, uh, was not operating with her lips. She had trouble getting her words out. Today she told me she knew what she wanted to say, but the words just didn't come. She does have a neurology appointment next month, but I just wanted to know... If Artie saw anything going on with her health, thanks, Mary. It has to do with the electrical impulses within her brain that's not consistent. Mm-hmm. And and I feel like with medication, with proper medication, um, she'll be able to um, focus better. Um, I'm also being told that um, she needs to erase um, any... Um, 
uh, processed sugars, any sweets out of her system, drinking lots of water. And it, it her problems, but her problems stand for um, the electrical impulses, the electrical impulses uh, within her brain. It's not flowing properly. But like I said, which there's a medication. I don't even know specifically what I'm talking about with the medication, but there is going to be a medication that will be given to her that will help her so that everything starts to flow properly again. But her diet's very important to, yeah. um, to keep the water in her system. She definitely needs to drink water and she definitely needs to stay away from uh, sweets. What about, hi- what about sugars. hypnotherapy? Because I think that MS is stress related, the, the uh, episodes. And if, if she's having trouble getting her words out, I would think that would make her even more fearful, which would exacerbate the problem. And, and Leslie is a licensed hypnotherapist, so maybe something like hypnotherapist could help her. Hypnotherapy could help her. I think hypnotherapy would be great for her, actually, yeah. because, um, you know, it's, um, it, it, it's sending a message um, and it's calming her and teaching her how to relax. And mm-hmm. um, it's, it's giving her these suggestions on what's going to help. It's yeah. all great. Yeah. It's all great. Whatever mm-hmm. works. Mm-hmm. Really. When, when you're doing hypnotherapy, which is also very, very good, when you're doing hypnotherapy, this is something that needs to be done with her on a consistent basis so that it is programmed. You can't, this, that's not just a one shot deal for her. Right. This well, is something that she needs to consistently, um, if she's going to go that route, which is a great idea. Um, it would definitely help her out, but she needs to do it on a consistent basis. Well, my hypnotherapist, yeah. Dr. Mark Schoen, shout out for him because he's really helped me a lot. He makes a recording and I play that religiously every night as I'm falling asleep. I take no breaks. I put on my headphones so it doesn't disturb mm. my husband, but I, I take no breaks from it because my emotional health is extremely important to me. And so that's some that's one way that you can, you can have that um, underlying support for your subconscious uh, on the daily which I think is yeah, helpful. Yeah, I think a good, a really good hypnotherapist will definitely make a recording for for their clients. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, you talk. Yeah, and we. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead, Artie. No, you're on. With, with with sultry music, playing sultry music, and again some affirmations, it definitely would help. It would it would definitely help. Mm-hmm. And um, even while she's sleeping. To listen to it because it does go into your subconscious also does anyone here on this panel want a reading from Artie? he's right here he's very expensive sure, sure. oh sure. dina dina come sit oh. dina come sit okay all right so let's start we'll start with jamie oh jamie because i said sure yep yeah. <laughs> yeah so Artie, can you feel um jamie and his loved ones what are you getting there he is there he is i'll hold on a second I've had no sugar today. <laughs> I have lots of water. I have a friend actually who's been employed by a group of doctors in Wisconsin. She's a psychic and she's a diagnostic psychic and she's been very successful at diagnosing uh, diseases and the and the treatment and the doctors employ her. Oh, uh, that's so very that's good. Yeah, I'm also a medical intuitive. Are you? Because I'm also a medical yeah. Well, you you got a lot of pressure in what you do because you have to be a hundred percent right every time. Almost. No, I don't. I mean, you don't. You, you can't. You don't, put, no, it's ever. Don't, don't it's people ever 100%. expect that? Do people expect that of you, though? Of course they don't. They don't. Okay, good. No, of course they do. They do. They do. But yeah, they do. It's like when you. It's like when you go bowling. Every time you throw that ball, you, you are. Strike. You're, you want to get the strike. You're going there right. with the intent of giving your best. Now, do I believe that within every moment of what I'm saying that I'm, is going to come true? Yes. Um, I have a feeling that you're going to end up taking – either you're giving courses or you're going to be taking courses yourself. Jamie? But there's mm-hmm. something – but I see you in a classroom-type atmosphere. Is that Interesting. Accurate? Is that accurate, Jamie? That's r- relatively accurate. I had a, a heart transplant about a year and a half ago. And uh, so I go around speaking to groups about donorship. Our donorship yes. level in this country is abysmal. I think it's uh, now it's up to 56% only. Yeah, you're going to be making, you keep on making so, a huge, huge difference. And you're, you're, you know, when you're going to retire, when you're in the ground, because yeah, you're going to keep on going. I know. That's true. You're going to keep on, you're never going to stop no, because that's, that's your so passion. True. And, and when you start making a positive impact in other people's lives, 
that really inspires you. I know you're happy for them, but that really ignites oh, you more yeah. than anything else. Yeah. So you're, you're a very compassionate, loving person. Um, when it comes to people, you're definitely a people person. And I you're love, genuine. I love my species. I love <laughs> right. my species. You're, you, really yeah, do. that's right. You're a I people really person do. just like myself. And that's really cool. And, um, I don't ever see you stopping. Um, as a matter of fact, um, you're going to be asked to, uh, travel abroad, uh, to do some kind of speaking as well. Mm -hmm. Somebody who is going to be within your classes or who you, who you're teaching, they're going to, there's going to be someone who's giving you a connection where you're going to be traveling, um, whether it be to Canada or to Hawaii, but it's going to be outside the country. I know that. Okay. So, Hawaii is not outside the country, Mr. Trump. No, it's not. No, I, but, but outside North America, it's, it's ah. still, I know it's within the the country and, but it, i'm saying outside of and just you, and contiguous. you said you said abroad i'm going to travel Outer abroad contiguous. And, and then you gave me canada so i'm a little disappointed well, canada is I was, technically... I'm, I'm looking more for like tahiti or ah. something like, you know somebody you can't tell the psychic where you'd like to go and then That's he makes right. that magically <laughs> but let me let me it's called you. a travel agent <laughs> let me uh, let me <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <right>. <laughs> have you ever heard of or been to casadega florida Yes, I have. Yes, and so have that I. was that I went there before I knew about my own spirituality. Really? And, and the wow. lady, yes, a guy. I was on my way to Florida with my when I was married. Wait, wait we we wife. have to stop and explain to the listeners and viewers. Casadega, <laughs> Florida, is a community of psychics in oh, northern wow. Florida. Yeah, there's one in upstate New York as well. I think. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's so right. Casadega is directly right in between Orlando. Yeah and daytona. daytona it's right in the middle on route four it's right off of route four mm -hmm. also known as saint helena's i think mm -hmm. if i'm not mistaken mm -hmm. saint helena's or saint helena's mm -hmm. yeah. and so which is also known as casadega and every single person in that neighborhood in that community um yes is a psychic or a medium and anyone will give you a reading yeah that's fascinating and, uh, yeah, it's fascinating wow. i i that's was waiting really outside of a building to go in and and be read and I was waiting in line with several other people, and um, somebody said, you're next. And I went and sat down across from this woman, and I read her. I started telling her stuff about herself, and it just... It just flowed out. Well, of maybe the spirits are really was, close to earth right there, and you were able to receive messages I whereas must you have. wouldn't ordinarily. I must have. And I said, I was just reading you. She said, I know. I felt you. I felt you. Wow. And then. What's really cool is, what, is that when you're in that spiritual energy, when you're in that spiritual vibration, it is so strong mm -hmm. that even the average person, not calling you average, but I, just was, I am average, who's not of psychic medium or mm -hmm. even if you are if whether you are or not it's almost like being in an atmosphere where you have a kite and but the wind is blowing yeah. so strongly it's impossible not to connect to the other side mm -hmm. the wind is so strong well, you don't even have to run just let your kite out and it's going to blow sky high what so do you have for leslie levels, so. what do you have for leslie Artie? Mm -hmm. thank you Artie. oh it's my pleasure but yeah no you're Agreed. um you're really going to keep on enjoying life and, and the people you're going to meet and, uh, and the travels and, um, you know, you're going to see people that are going to be willing to give you gifts or, you know, they're, they're just going to be so happy with what you're doing or let me ha give you this. Let me give you that. It's, it could be personal heirlooms. It could be buying you dinner. It could be, to, and just allow yourself to receive and don't ever, ever, downplay anyone's appreciation to you because it is so wrong that when people show appreciation to you and you go no and i'm not just saying this for you i'm saying mm -hmm. this in general for everybody you go no that's okay ah oh, don't be silly don't be silly. no it was not no i don't need that oh thank you anyway but no when when somebody is so appreciative of you helping them out on any level it is gracious to say thank you very much and allow yourself to receive Absolutely. Because then you're taking in the person's sincerity and you're not downplaying their emotions. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've taught my kids that. I've taught my children that. Not not to, so, I mean, to accept their their gratitude and, and their grace. I mean, I was, I was a comedian for 40 years and people would come up to me after the shows and cry sometimes because they were so thankful 
that they had laughed for the first time Aww. in six months. They'd been going through cancer and uh, get a treatment and chemo and all that stuff. And um, yeah, so so and you were doing, able to put a light on it. Doing what I did, doing what I did, just making people laugh or allowing people to laugh uh, for uh, my career was uh, very gratifying. And I and I tried to take that that graciously, and I tried to be humble at the same time. That's wonderful. Yeah, that's really nice. Yeah, and like I said, it's very rewarding. So, like what I do for a living, yes, on the most part, it's serious. But yet I do throw a lot of humor into it, mm -hmm. you know, given the moments, you know, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of funny stories oh, from, yeah. uh, you know, from, you know, my experiences and stuff. Yeah. So you got to keep that uh, humor in there. I do. I, when I do the, the, the talks about donorship, I put a lot of humor in there too, because that's the way people remember you through humor. Yeah. Right? And, and, and whoever said laughter is the best medicine has never had a morphine drip. I guarantee you that. <laughs> That's right. That's right. He asks so people to drop a kidney in a jar on their way out. Yes. yes I do. <laughs> Make a donation. Do you That's have right. anything? Please. Do you have anything for Leslie? Leslie, are you um, right now? And I'm asking you for your sake, not for my sake. We're too far away. Are you are you like um, not in a serious relationship now? I am. I've been married for um, 31 years. OK. All right. Sounds now, pretty serious. Yeah. Yeah, it sounds pretty serious. Yeah, when are you going to get used to it? No, I'm like, <laughs> when are you going to start getting used to it? For, um, but now sometimes when I read someone, I'm not just reading the person who I'm reading, but it's the person who you're most concerned with. Mm. Okay. Hmm. So I'm not just reading. I could be reading your best friend. I could be reading your daughter. I could be reading who's ever your most concerned with. Because when I'm looking at you, I keep on hearing the song in my head, Looking for love in all the wrong places. <laughs> well, actually, you know what? I think it's my daughter. <laughs> it so, has to be your daughter because maybe. when yeah. I'm looking at you, and I had to look, keep on looking right at you. And even though I'm, um, I'm, I'm trying to not connect to the other two, I'm just trying to connect to you. And I'm just looking directly at you. And and that was the song that's coming into my head. That's why I asked you that question. But that's why I needed to explain. So it's your daughter that you're mostly concerned about because that's the one you're always worried about. And it's interesting looking for love in all the wrong places because she's in Europe now um, and she's been traveling around. So I don't know what's going on relationship wise with her, but she's <laughs> well, she's in a wrong place wherever she is. Right? Wherever well, she put is. it this way. You know, you can get all hot seat, you know, with somebody. Long distance relationships suck. I just got to tell you that right now. But um, hold on, I'm gonna try to focus in on you as far as just you. Let's make it about you. Um, are you looking right now, for some reason, I'm, I'm feeling like there's new endeavors, like a new business relationship. You're, you're just breaking through or you're trying to get accomplished right now. And um, you're, um, you keep on debating. It's like, you're, don't be afraid to lose money. Don't be afraid to lose time. The bottom line is if you're passionate about it, if you're happy and you know, clap your hands. No, but if you're passionate <laughs> about it, go for it. I'm telling you, go for it because you will be successful at it. And don't allow devil's advocate thoughts or advice to stop you. But I do see you being successful in a new endeavor. But you got to stop giving the excuses. Well, I don't know. And I don't know. You overanalyze too much. And that's what blocks you. She does. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well, you are like the real deal. You are just nailing it. That's just crazy. That's yes. Great. I um, actually am, uh, have been looking into an endeavor uh, with my two, my when my parents passed away, they um, left us some land out in the middle of the desert, and I'm like talking like nowhere land on the way to Las Vegas, and um, we want to uh, lease it out and build solar a solar farm on the property. Wow! Yeah, right. And um, the problem is we're kind of running into some roadblocks with. Um, uh, the the San Bernardino Board of Supervisors, 
who don't believe in windmills, if you get my drift. Well, yeah. they cause cancer. <laughs> yeah. 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 How can you run into roadblocks? There's no roads out there. It's a desert. <laughs> it's, it's a desert. Hey. Boy, you really are having a hard time. <laughs> so yes, that's that. Yeah, that's it. That's what that's what we're trying to do. So now, Artie, I don't know if you're able to see Dina. Can you guys cut to a camera that would have Dina? Yeah, see, I see. See Dina. Oh, Dina. Oh, to the okay. Yeah. I got gotcha. you. So, we'll Hi, do Dina. Zoom in hey, on Dina. Dina said she wanted it to have a reading. Okay, Dina. Do I need to? You have to sit ask still. Ask you something. Uh, if you want to ask me a specific question, you could, or I could just try to um, ask the spiritual world. See, like when I'm when you're talking, mm -hmm. or when I'm looking at you at the, in the same moments, um, having a conversation or trying to connect to the other side to see what they want to share with you. And, um, is my, um, can you hear my mom? Is she over there? Hold on a second. Why do I keep on seeing lots of balls? I keep on seeing balls, balls playing with lots what of balls. What kind of balls? <laughs> She's, she lives in a house full of men, but. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> No pun intended. She, she she works at a Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> um, I see I see like more exploratory, believe it or not, having something to do with like planetarium, something to do with the stars. Um, I have a feeling that you're going to know more, or you're going to be with somebody who is us very intrigued with the like the telescope that's looking up into the stars and into the moon and into the planets um, um, it yeah you're going to be very intrigued by somebody's astronomy not so much as astrology but with the with the stars and the planets and I have the feeling that you're going to end up going into this I see you going into this large large room that has a very powerful telescope that zooms into the planets with extreme precision and um and you're gonna and there's like thousands of stars in the sky at the time that you experience this but i do see this for you and uh, you're gonna go wow wow this is what Artie was talking about but i do see <laughs> that happening that's um, awesome i mean i do take i take my son to like a lot of like museums and yeah that kind of stuff mm -hmm. so we might be going to the griffith observatory that could definitely happen yeah, I definitely mm -hmm. see you being in a position like that. And it's going to be really, really exciting. Um, your mom is extremely proud of you. And she said, don't ever doubt yourself as being, you know, doubt yourself as being the good mother that you are. She said, sweetheart, you're doing good. And you can't be everywhere at the same time for everybody, for everyone else's expectations. She said, so stop beating yourself up. You're doing just fine. All right. Well, that uh, doesn't that doesn't sound like who she was in life, but I would love to believe that that's what she's saying from the other side. But that's what she's saying from the she, it is what she's saying from the other side. See, you also have to understand, like when you're caught up in your realm of being in life, when you're in the spiritual world, you see everything 2020 vision like of everything. And you start noticing a lot of things. And a lot of times when people did not give you, like I just did a reading the other day and um, there was a, uh, a lady who very rarely got the affection from her mother. And, her, and before she even told me that, I told her, I said, your mother is saying, I'm so sorry for not giving you or expressing to you the I love yous and the nurturing that you deserved. And, um, you know, it, it just wasn't who I was. And so, but she says, I wish I had a chance to do it all over again. Because when you cross over, you've heard the expression, when you die, your life flashes before you. Mm -hmm. That's 100% yes. true. Because what happens when we pass away, we get a chance to experience how we personally affected every single person in our life from the time we're born to the time we die. And we get a chance to feel everyone else's feelings and we get a chance to, to experience and feel the cause and effect of what we had on everybody else mm -hmm. so that we can understand the meaning and the significance of our own life. Okay. So when she came across that moment with you, 
and 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 wanting to express more of about love and about family, about nurturing. Right. She said, she said, honey, uh, you know, it's not that you weren't worth it. It's just wasn't something of who I was. It wasn't a part of my DNA. She goes, but when I stand where I stand right now and I look at you, she goes, I really am, sweetheart. I'm very proud of you. And she's showing me roses and um, she's handing you roses. And I promise you that you are going to see a rose garden that's going to be beyond your wildest dreams or somebody randomly is going to hand you red roses. Wow. And I want you to know that when you acknowledge this, this will be a gift from your mother. Is that resonating, Tina? Yeah. Um, my mom, uh, right before she got sick, was a florist. She had her own. Oh, my gosh. Um, she had her own flower shop for a few years. Um, mm -hmm. And for a long time after she died, I hated flowers. I couldn't even be around them. And but when I connected to it. Yeah. Well, when I first when I first met my husband, like 13 years ago, I said, don't ever bring me flowers because mm -hmm. I hated flowers. But now I love them. I've like transformed and I love to have like fresh flowers in my house. And like Good. right now during like when the spring comes, like I love putting all kinds of flowers everywhere. And um, we're going to plant stuff in our garden this year. So, yeah, that is a really amazing um, insight. Nope. So for me, Artie, I would love to hear uh, a message from my father. Okay, hold on just one second. I just want to express a little more about the flowers. Oh, and good. this is for everybody. Mm -hmm. When you're feeling negative energy in your life or you're feeling negative vibrations within your home, if you take live white flowers and put it in your home, white flowers, live white flowers absorbs negative energy. Wow. I know the Buddhists, the Buddhists uh, consider white flowers a symbol of death. Yeah. Uh, and so what it is, I, it's the death. It's, it's the ending of the negative energy. It absorbs uh -huh. the negative energy. Now, now. And so, okay, good. It could be like carnations. It could be tulips, yeah. um, you know, whatever you want it to be. But, you know, white flowers, white roses, um, uh, white roses, uh, again, very powerful, very loving to, and they lovingly take the negative energy and, and soak it up. Mm. And also, if you're feeling a lot of negative energy within your life or within your body, literally, if you walk around outdoors on a grass, like if you go to a park or you just want to walk in your backyard, but walk around outside on the grass barefoot, you will feel that Mother Earth will suck out your negative energy. And you're going to feel a lot better after a walk. Uh, a barefoot walk in the park or in the mm -hmm. in your backyard. Is that why when you when I when, whenever I go to the beach and I lie in the sand afterwards, I just feel so good. I mean, it's yeah. just mm -hmm. something about the energy, about like lying, you know, on the ground, yeah. being grounded. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, no. yeah. Mother Earth one hundred percent sucks out the energy, uh, the negative energy from you. And when you ask. Now, also, if you want to, if all of you want to have a much more peaceful day every day of your life, more serenity, more uh, like things just going in rhythm, literally call upon your angels. Everybody on this earth has at least two guardian angels around them 24 seven. But an angel is not allowed to intervene into your life um, if you don't ask, because that's a part of your free will. The only time an angel could intervene into your life without you asking is if you're in a do or die situation and it's not your time to go, they will step in to save you. Mm -hmm. wow. So, so if, so how I start my days every day, I call upon all my loving guardian angels. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for granting me peace, serenity, and miracles and blessings. Uh, thank you for intervening my into my life and and sharing with me all your love in the name of the holy spirit amen you know give or take a few words but that but that's basically what i say and when when i have an overwhelmed schedule or i have situations circumstances i just don't worry about it people will cancel out uh new situations will be brought upon me prosperity will be brought to me and it just they just balance it out i just choose not to worry about it is it is it the same as if you speak to God? Because I, I always speak to God. I don't necessarily yeah. say guardian angels, but I'm always great. I'm always expressing gratitude um, 
for for my life and uh, and for my loved ones and so is it necessary it's that same. people say guardian angels or can they also just speak directly to god no you can cut out the middle man <laughs> it's just a word it's just a word right you know yeah and, no and, that's that's totally fine but whatever you relate to mm -hmm. that's perfectly fine you know it could be jesus it could be moses it could be the saints it could be the angels it could be directly to god um however way you wish to share it there's no one way better than the other mm -hmm. you know whatever whatever resonates uh more yeah. comfortably within your heart that's the best way it's speak it could be groucho marx could be. That's I speak to about. I speak to Groucho Marx every day. So, do you have any? Uh, are you able to um, connect with my father? All right. Which one? Who am I talking to? That Louise. would be me. Oh, okay. Did he like to make a lot of little projects? Was he always into like doing little, making projects, like taking little things and making them into something? Or, or like to paint certain things and like take a nothing and paint it into something. I'm, so, I don't sort know if I'm of. connecting. <laughs> he would sort take of. a block of wood and he would sculpt. Hmm. Okay, so yeah. So he would take a nothing and make it into something. Yes, absolutely. Okay, so this is, all right, so that's what I'm getting. So to, just so you know. Um, and now was his name Joseph or was he a gambler? Um, Joseph is his father. Oh, okay, because that's who he's with right now. Oh, uh, okay. And he and he's calling himself Little Joe. <laughs> mm. That's why that's why I asked if he was a gambler, because that's an expression with when you're shooting craps, little uh, Joe. <laughs> okay. So but um so let me see what else he might have to He said, Whatever you do, don't change your hair. I like it just the way it is. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Were you thinking about changing your hair or do you just change your hair or? No, I just kind of, I don't spend a lot of time or energy on my hair. I just kind of like let it grow until it's really bothering me. And then I call up Jody who cuts it. Oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah. Well, he, so sometimes he, it's a little he, bit longer and sometimes it's a little bit shorter. Okay. He likes it a little bit longer. Okay. Actually. That sounds, that's, that's his preference and choice and all. And, um, he also said, thank you for the tattoo. Someone just did a tattoo, um, I believe, on his behalf, or somebody just got a tattoo. Now we're Jewish. Yeah. No, somebody else. No, there is something with a tattoo. Was there like a carving on his behalf? There was, there was some kind of a carving, because it's in reference to like a tattoo. There was a plaque or a carving on his behalf. Mm. Mm. You carved that brisket <laughs> that year. <laughs> Maybe someone else in my family would, would be familiar with a carving. Just not sure. Okay, he's he's expressing. So it could be a portrait. Somebody did a portrait of him. It yeah. seems like it's something of like a picture or something, and I related it to a tattoo. There's a portrait of him that is in my mom's house, and then we have a lot of his sculptures in my home in Santa Barbara. We have a lot of his sculptures. Okay. All right, so then that's, all right, so that's what he's... Uh, gravitating to now why am i picking up there's somebody there um who's connected with around january 26th i'm january 18. okay hold on a second <laughs> um january 18th uh get your uh get your uh, glands and thyroids checked out Okay. Go to the doctors. He goes just, to the doctor go all the time because he's. I go because yeah. I'm I'm a I'm a heart and liver recipient, so they they check me out all the time. Okay, yeah. yeah. There's something. Uh, just check out something with the left side. Something with the left side of your body. Interesting. Okay, thank which, you. Which, so I mean, I wish I nothing bad upon you. It's just no. something that I got. It's just something. Just mm -hmm. you know, because like I said, when I when I say, you know, like I said, I needed to to focus on one of you. So. And I was asking the angels, you know, who can I focus on? And so they just told me around January 26th, there's a connection there. And, and so right, usually, sudden, usually their angels are pointing to a birth date when they give you a date like that? It's a birth date or an anniversary of, um, a lot of times it's loved ones, just mm -hmm. letting you know that, you know, mm -hmm. like they're saying, like, there's a birthday happening, like, right about now. There is somebody's birthday or an anniversary that's happening right about now. They, they know that there's a birthday right now? 
yeah. That's accurate. It's Lane's birthday. Yeah. Who's? Lane is in, in Lane. the booth. That's Lane. That today oh, cool. today well, is his birthday. birthday. Are you getting a message for Lane? Okay, hold on. Looking for love and all the <laughs> No, no, no. Lane's happy. He's happy. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm just I actually, joking. I have a question. Um, I've been told yeah. by two separate people that I have a bad aura, a dark aura no. in my life. No. I don't see auras or anything, but these people claim they do. Is there no. is that anything? No. no, they're just trying to manipulate you. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I, yeah. You want to know something? I just released the curse. I just re- oh. you're, you're blessed <laughs> yes. with the white light of love. Take that. I'm circling <laughs> you. I'm circling you. You're blessed with the white light of love. And you're going to have so much good prosperity now. Oh, so great. many things you're going to say, like, I I've can't believe this. this. And you're going to say, you know what? This is just a coincidence. There's too many good things coming my way. And to prove what I'm saying to you, you're going to find paper money on the ground. It could be a $5 oh, bill, a $10 great. bill, a $20 bill, whatever. But you're going to find paper money on the ground. And you're going to say, all right. Okay. All right. So don't worry. But you're going to start noticing things really starting to roll your way. And there's going to be other connections for you personally and with business. And um, it's like even out of your control, it's just going to be, it's just going to happen without you even giving much of an effort. And I feel like this is going to happen consistently for the next month or two. Well, that's good news. Yeah. Really yeah. Good. Excellent. Yeah. So don't, uh, don't worry about negative bull crap. That's... Bad, the bad auras. Don't worry about any those. other, any yeah, other. Don't worry. Nope. Any I, other I messages before we move on to um, wrap up the show, Artie, any, any other messages for the room here? Okay. Um, what I'm getting, and, and I say this with all sincerity, mm-hmm. there's a very good dynamic and there's a very good rhythm. There's a very good energy overall with everything and what's going on. And, and, and I'm hearing like, it's, it's like you guys got really, you're very blessed because there's a perfect Zen going on right now, wow. the energy field, there's a perfect Zen going on. Um, one of you is consistently, um, not, well, I don't want to say too consistently, but is going to have to take time off from the show. It's like, I'm here for a week or two and then I'm gone for a week or two or three, and then I have to come back and then, but someone's mm-hmm. going to be caught up with personal circumstances out of their control. And they're not going to be able to be a part of the panel, but they're still a part of the show. Oh, okay. okay. We'll, we'll, we'll we'll be open to rolling with that. Yeah, you got to roll with it. Just roll with it. But I feel like um, as far as the overall energy, I do feel like your show is going to, and I'm not just saying this just to be nice, your show is going to keep on growing. Um, um, and, and I'm getting, uh, were you taking on sponsors? Were you looking to? try to take on sponsors and stuff Mm -hmm. yeah eventually sure yeah Yeah. love to yeah because i do see you know sponsors um coming your way as well so i mean the energy of everything of what you got is going to is going very well but there's somebody who's really really good at marketing and someone's going to add a different flavor to your show that is going to help you even step up your game even more than what it is Uh so and i do feel like it's going to happen within this year so um, there's going to be like one or two things, new things uh, that's going to be proposed to you guys. That's going to, uh, you know, make things even better than what they already are. That's wonderful, Artie. Yeah, we'll, very we'll, cool. We'll look forward to that. All right. The final thing that we like to do on our show is called What's Twitter Trending? And I look on Twitter every every Tuesday to see what's trending. And this today, what's trending was hashtag my help wanted ad. And then I pick some winners who have tweeted. So we have Robin with a Y. Can you read that one, Jamie? Oh, Robin with a Y. Sure. There you go. Um, wanted. Wanted. She she really wants something Oh, yeah, wanted here. colon. Wanted colon, wanted colon. Someone to walk behind my husband and close cupboards after he leaves them open. <laughs> okay, I, I live in the same house with this woman because... <laughs> My not only does he leave all cupboards open, he leaves the microwave open. Like you, you're in such a hurry to eat that you can. And then he'll say, "I'm airing it out." That's, that's this, a good. Does excuse. he leave the dishwasher open? Because mine leaves the dishwasher. <laughs> open. Oh, that's dangerous. I think yeah. it's Trip like their way that. of marking their territory. Is is it like a male thing no. to leave things? No. 
Okay. Wait, does he leave the toilet seat down or up? <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to ask Robin. All right, I'm going to let Leslie read Bunny Grandma's tweet. Well, right but the then you're going to have to look at the screen and read the rest of it, whoever has good eyesight, because oh. she actually put... So it, I'm cool. It's well, I'm, so wait, I'm first let sure. me read. Bunny okay. Grandma tweeted, I hope my help wanted ad is as interesting as this one, and that you found one in the newspaper, and it's pretty good. So if you can't read that, I can. But Okay, I'm quite sure most of you have seen the rather large green dragon that has been flying over northeast... <laughs> Oh, oh, OKC, OKC, Oklahoma City, yeah. Oklahoma City for the better part of a week. I am looking for someone to lure said dragon away to OKC to a more rural area. Mm-hmm. Force said dragon to land in rural area. That's reasonable. <laughs> Slay said dragon in whatever way you see fit. Oh, that's a little that's excessive. A... <laughs> I think that's excessive. I really do. Well, no pay. Dragon slaying is its own reward. <laughs> Please note that I am not talking about the red dragon that frequents the area from time oh, to time. No. He and I have an agreement. Yeah. <laughs> That's He's a cool. really specific wanted, Ed. Red, Red Dragon's cool. I hope he meets with success. Uh, I want to thank you so much, Artie. Let's go back yes. and review where people can find you and your services, Artie. Oh, thank you. Yeah, if they just go to artiehoffman.com, it lists everything. Pops up. Um, as far as where I'm going to appear, well, it's on the East Coast. <laughs> mm-hmm. So where I'm going to be here, what I'm doing, uh, my private reads, my arty parties. I do speakings. I do fundraisers. And you do and, a weekly um, Facebook Live show, right, where people can... And every Sunday night. Yes, every Sunday night. If I don't do it Sunday night, I'll do it Monday evening, mm-hmm. um, you know, because sometimes, you know, stuff happens. But Sunday evening, um, <laughs> 8 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Western time, um, I do a Facebook Live show where I do free readings for the public. So when they join the Facebook Live, it's called Angels and Answers, mm-hmm. Angels and Answers. But if you go to ArtieHoffman.com, there is a link that goes right to, to right to the show. And so what happens is that people type in questions during the show, and I literally get about a thousand questions within the, within the hour. So my wonderful assistant, Carrie, just randomly picks the questions out as they're scrolling down really fast. Mm -hmm. She just picks a question. She reads it to me and then I connect to your loved one or I tell you about your love life or whatever it is question you're asking. And I look at the camera. That's uh, that's speed reading. Yeah. You're not kidding. And I'm amazed that I could even do it. I was just praying like hell I was right half the time. Holy moly. And then people just type in, oh, my God, that's what he said. Oh, my God, that was so true. And oh, how, how exciting. That's well, th- I hope you'll come back on our show soon because we loved having you. This has been really inspirational yeah. and informative and just absolutely a delight. So thank you. Oh, I had a great time. I had a really fantastic. good time. Thank you so much. Thank you, Artie. Thank you, Lane McFadden. And happy birthday, Lane. Thomas, your white light is abundantly clear. <laughs> uh, Jamie Elcroft, Leslie Sackheim, Dina Friedman. I want to thank Bill Filipiak, Steve Joyner. And, of course, John Maddox. I'm Louise Palenker, and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.